Look at Psalm 105. It says in verse 37, He brought Israel forth, this is amplified, forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble tribe, not one feeble person among their tribes. So here were a bunch of slaves coming out of bondage, and God was able to bring them forth with silver and gold. Hallelujah. No doubt people let, uh, gave them stuff. No doubt, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how they managed except the blessing of God was on them and he manifested. And they came out laden down with silver and gold. Glory to God. And they weren't sick. Not one feeble one among their tribes. Hallelujah. We ought not have any sick among us in Jesus' name. Jesus himself bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. And by his stripes we were healed. We are healed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And there should not be one feeble one among our tribes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I, we believe for healing. You need to believe for healing when you're well and when you're sick. And you need to say healing words. Talk healing. Don't talk sickness and disease. Don't walk in fear of things when they tell you on television there's this plague coming. Say, well, I'll never have it. Oh, I think I'd be afraid to say that. Well, I might be afraid not to say that. I say, I'd never have it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed from the curse. Every sickness and every disease is under the curse. Exodus 23 says, You shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness from your midst. Now, is that plain enough? It's not God's will for His people to be sick. It's a curse. I will bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness from your midst. None shall lose her young by miscarriage or be barren in your land. I, God says, I will fulfill the number of your days. Amen. He says that to us, and I take that. God will fulfill the number of my days. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, 28. Oh, yeah, I like this. Well, let's look at, uh, have you not known and have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint or grow weary, and there's no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and weary. Oh, what a great scripture. Don't lose this scripture. He gives power to the faint and weary, and to him who has no might, he increases strength causing it to multiply and making it abound. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall stumble, feebly stumble and fall exa uh, exhausted. But listen to this. But those who wait upon the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, shall change and renew their strength and power. Glory to God. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God. Hallelujah. They shall run and not be weary. Jesus is the healer. Amen. Amen. So we know if we're, if we're spiritually with it, at the first sign of a symptom of sickness or fever or any kind of bad feeling, you say, no, you don't say it. You're not touching my body. In the name of Jesus, I'm healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. And if you're smart, you'll have a list of healing scriptures like you have medicine in a medicine cabinet. You have healing scriptures that you can go to and you begin to take your medicine one verse at a time. Or if it's your children you're praying for, you do it the same way. And then you lay hands on yourself if you're the one that's doing it. You say, I command you to be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll not take that, Satan. I'm healed in Jesus' name. You can have your own healing service. You can have a healing service for your family. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lay hands on them. Say, take your Bible in there. And if they're not believers, if they're very sick, they probably are now. So, <laughs> so 
no, go in there and, and say, I've come to pray for you. Would you like for me to pray for you? And most of them, if they're very sick, they'll say, yes, please. Uh -huh. And then what do you do? Well, you've got your healing scriptures and you read the scripture to, to them and you say, now this is what Jesus did. He bore your sicknesses. He carried your diseases. And then he told the church to go lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Amen. Didn't say they might. Said they would recover. And so then what do you do? Well, you lay hands on them. You anoint them with oil. You do whatever the Lord leads you to do. Glory to God. There's a healer in the house. Yeah. You're it sometimes. Amen. And if you've had children, you've had experience in, he, in, in the healing ministry. And that's just the way you do with other people. You pray for them. You pray for them. Believe God for them. Read them the scripture. Hallelujah. You say, well, I, I, I don't know if... Uh, I've always been a little timid about those things. Well, get over it. Amen. If you were laying up in the bed sick, wouldn't you want somebody to pray for you? Absolutely. So get over it. Amen. it it's, I used to be timid, but I got over it. Glory to God. I couldn't imagine that I would ever preach, ever, or do anything on a platform. But, you know, you just do what you're told. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. The Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to teach healing school in every, every meeting. That was not my plan at all. Because at that time, I stayed home when I wanted to and I went when I wanted to. <laughs> but he put us to work, hallelujah. And he'll do the same in your life and it'll be the biggest blessing. When you walk out the plan of God in your life, you will enjoy the most magnificent blessings, hallelujah. So we know that sickness came because of sin. There was no sickness in the garden. And uh, we know from Galatians 3, we read that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and this scripture, of course, in Isaiah 53, let's look at it. If we looked at it earlier, we're going to look at it again. Surely, this is the scripture you turn to. This is the go-to scripture. Surely he, Jesus, has borne our griefs, and this is the Amplified Bible, and it, it's, if you don't have an Amplified, write this one out and put it somewhere in your King James. Surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses and distresses and carried our sorrows. So sadness and sorrow is just like sickness and disease. Jesus took care of it. You may have lost a loved one and after, after that one left, it, you, you just never have recovered from the sadness of it. Well, you need to look at this in the Bible manner. Sadness is part of the curse. Joy is part of the blessing. Amen. It's not all right. I mean, you know, I, uh, you, you grieve uh, for a little while, maybe a few days or whatever, but you don't just go in your room, pull up the covers over your head and stay in the dark. No. You trust God. Amen. You say, well, I don't know why, why they were taken. Well, that's exactly right. You don't know why, so why should you think any more about it? Amen. You don't know. Obviously, you don't know. So you trust God that they're with him and you go on. You say, yeah, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't born again. You don't know that. Lots of things happen to people when they see they're about to die. But sometimes they get real sweet. And sometimes they get desperate and they say, Jesus, help me. Come into my life. And the Lord doesn't say, you jerk, you should have told me that 10 years ago. No, Jesus just comes in and blesses them. Gets them born again right there on the spot. And out of here they go. And heaven is their home. That's called grace. Great grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Doesn't that make you feel good? 
You make him the Lord of your life and you receive him as your Lord and Savior. And, it, and you can look at the way, if that's true in your life, you're probably not all that happy and satisfied with life because you're still under a curse. Only way out from under the curse that came in the Garden of Eden is when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you think about it, He took all your sins, all your sicknesses, all your diseases, all the bad stuff, the whole curse. Jesus was made a curse for us that we could be made the righteousness of God. And you might have ignored Him all your life, but now you're thinking about maybe you're about through, or you could be young and have never done it. And so today when we pray, we're going to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Well, what happens to you? You get born over again. I mean, you may, we might have somebody here that's 99 years old today and never has made Jesus the Lord of her life or his life. And that person just get born over again. Start a whole new life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, I wouldn't want to miss it, would you? When I think about what it was like before Ken and I made Jesus the Lord of our lives, it was just the curse. One bad thing after another, no money, didn't know how to pray. I mean, it was just terrible. But thank God we got redeemed from the curse. And I said, Lord, in that little house in Tulsa we were in, that's where we were the broke. Well, that might not be our brokest time, but it was mighty close. And uh, we didn't have anything. We, we had a few pieces from the Goodwill store and we had uh, a table Ken made. That, no, that was in Little Rock where we had that table. And uh, we, but we, this was, there was Little Rock and then there was Tulsa. And so by now we're on the right track. Ken went to Tulsa because of Brother Roberts and the, the, he was going to go to ORU. And he did go to ORU for one whole semester. And... He, uh, and so that, so we were going for it. We were born again by then. And uh, we, we just, man, I, we, we just, I prayed, Lord, take my life and do something with it. But I didn't have any idea what he'd do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ken was the preacher in the house, and I was just the mother. But uh, he had, the Lord put me to work too. So there you have it. Two for, two for the price of one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. Let's read this scripture. If I've already read it, I'm going to read it to you again before we pray. Surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains. So sadness is, is something Jesus bore. Like Sadness is a curse. Pain is a curse. Sickness is a curse. Weakness is the curse. Uh, the blessing does away with that. Jesus took the curse in himself, the Bible says in Galatians. He took the curse in himself and he was made, we know from Isaiah, he was made sin for us who knew no sin. He took the curse. I mean, that curse had to be dealt with. Adam had changed God's. And when he did, men were not born out of the life of God anymore. They were born under the curse. Somebody had to step up. And there was nobody but Jesus that qualified. And he, he went. He came for us. Think about going from the right hand of the Father into this earth and, and knowing that you're going to be crucified, you're going to be tortured, you're going to be scoffed at, laughed at, spit on. And then on top of all that, you're going to become a curse for us, for the people. What a, what a sacrifice he made. The least we can do, since Jesus did that for me and you, and he would have done it for us if it, we'd been the only ones, is to do whatever we can do that would please him in this life. And when you do what pleases him, you benefit. You get blessed. He knows he's got the best plan for you. He's got things for you you never even dreamed of if you've never made him the Lord of your life. And when we pray today, 
you and you you do it with your whole heart and make him the Lord of your life and ask him to help you and teach you and take you and you know somebody might have drug you in here today and, and, and you might have come in saying well if they think I'm going to be a Christian I'm going to become a Christian they got another thing coming that's stupid Amen. Not, that's not stupid that's stupid Amen. can't you tell you need help hallelujah Dear me, our life began to improve when we made Jesus the Lord of our lives, and it's still happening. We're still growing. We're still increasing. We're still being blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ken just improves all the time. He's a, he, I'm just kidding you. You know, he's a sweet, sweet man. He's so good to me. I'm telling you, husbands, you be good to your wives. It pays off. Ken wouldn't care if I went down today and spent every nickel that he had in the world. He would say, well, what'd you get? <laughs> it's wonderful not to have a stingy husband. Hallelujah. I didn't call y'all stingy. I just said it's wonderful <laughs> not to have a stingy husband. Lord, we're so grateful to you today for this life and that we are born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and you reveal the word to us and it's your will for every person to be healed. We thank you that you yourself bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases and by your stripes we were healed. We were healed so we are healed. And today, we all come into agreement around the healing anointing, around you, Jesus, as our healer. We take you, say, I receive you, Jesus, I receive you, Jesus. As, the of my body. as the healer of my body. I receive you as my Savior in every area of life. I receive you as the Lord of my life. And I'm asking you, Lord, for wisdom to direct my path, to guide me, to help me, to teach me how to obey you in every aspect of life. And I thank you, Lord, for healing my body today. I know you yourself took my infirmities bore my sicknesses and I know that by your stripes I was healed and I agree with that scripture I take that scripture and I am healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus is the Lord of my life he is the healer of my body glory to God Thank you, Lord. We praise you for that healing anointing today. Thank you for healing us, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see someone in their lung, especially their right lung. Yeah. There's it, something in, uh, like in your right lung that's keeping the oxygen from going all the way in, but it's leaving. Literally, it's leaving that blockage, uh, that, that pleurs, whatever it is, the pneumonia, the tumor, whatever it is causing that, it's leaving. Sister Gloria, this is Thomasine from Ashland, Virginia. She was diagnosed with a cyst on her lungs just a few days ago. Supposed to have some more tests, but this morning when you prayed the prayer of faith, she said the power of God came on her. She hasn't been able to breathe deep with, without discomfort. Show them how you're breathing right now. Deep. And I watched her. I watched her run from the middle aisle. She says she hasn't been able to run. Will you demonstrate running for him today? Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at her. She gave a high five on that far end. Glory to God. You must be the one I saw that moving out of your lungs. Glory to God. Woo! Hey, have yours in Jesus' name. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Several 
days ago, because it's not, it's been maybe, maybe two weeks, I went to the doctor and um, for one thing, and they took some chest x-rays and found something else. Um, they believe that it's a cyst on my lung. I knew I could, I was having problems breathing. I was having problems walking, uh, you know, f especially if I did it fast. Couldn't run at all. <laughs> Could not run. And um, thank you, Jesus. And so um, they took the test and saw what they thought was a cyst. So they're sending me for some tests on the 20th of November. And my husband and I prayed together. And we're believing that when I go there, it's going to be gone. Whatever it was will be no more. But we, I normally come to healing school. I've been here since Thursday this time. I was able to make it on Thursday. And um, I felt so bad last night. I mean, sick. I felt really bad. And I thought, this is not working. And, you know, I'm, I don't mean here, it's not working. But I don't accept the devil coming after me like that, because I know that's what it is. So I just, we woke up this morning. We had devotional service. We were praising God. By the time I got here, I was jacked up. I really was <laughs> excited. When we pray and speak to it, receive it. And here's how you receive it. You not only say thank you, but you do what you couldn't do before. If there was a knee joint and, and you needed knee replacement and you couldn't run, run. If you couldn't bend it, bend it. If you couldn't climb stairs, climb stairs. And I knew that was me. I knew it was me. And so I just grabbed hold to that. I just grabbed hold to it. And he said, do something you couldn't do. My girlfriend said she looked and, and I was gone. I started running and I ran all across the back and down, down the side. And I wasn't winded when I got up here. And I'm still not winded. I didn't know where you guys were gonna be. I went out there looking for you. I came back and I was breathing fine when I sat down. <laughs> I'm healed. <laughs> I'm not winded. <laughs> I'm not with it. Oh, Lord, be the God. This is your year of victory. Come to the Southwest Believers Convention June 30th through July 5th at the Fort Worth Convention Center in downtown Fort Worth, Texas. Join Kenneth and Gloria Copeland along with Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis, Creflo Dollar, Keith Moore, and Bill Winston for a week-long conference that will change your life. Receive God's Word, His wisdom, and His plan to live a strong, healthy, blessed life. Bring your family and friends. There'll be live Spanish interpretation, pre-service prayer with Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, exciting youth services for teens, and Super Kid Academy for children. Come to a special partner meeting with Kenneth Copeland Friday morning. Then join Gloria Copeland for a powerful healing service on Saturday morning. Celebrate the 4th of July with us as we honor God for His goodness and celebrate our nation's birthday. It's all free June 30th through July 5th at the Southwest Believers Convention. For more information, go to kcm.org southwest. For more than 30 years, Gloria Copeland has taught God's Word on health and healing. And now she wants to help you learn how to receive your healing. God wants you well, and He wants you to experience life free from sickness, disease, and pain. Through the Receive Your Healing Package, you can renew your mind as you learn what God's health plan is for you. You can even discover how to override health issues that run in the family. This package by Gloria Copeland includes a book, God's Will for Your Healing, the six CD Healing School series, and Healing Confessions CD to activate the healing power of God through the spoken word. Also included is Brother Kenneth Copeland's prescription healing brochure to help keep God's prescription for health in front of your eyes. You don't have to wait any longer. Take part in God's health plan today. Side effects include a healthy body, freedom from pain, renewed outlook from God's word. They may also include joy, peace, restful sleep, and boundless energy. Order the Receive Your Healing Package for $24.99 and enjoy a special savings of 45%. Simply log on to kcm.org slash TV special and request your package today. Transform your overall health and well-being through the Word of God. 
Live out the full numbers of your days in health and peace. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. For this and other products on healing by Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. Order today. Listen to this marvelous scripture. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. He took the, he took the, the cause. He paid the price. He did it for you and me. He brought us through until when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, we can be born over again. We can be healed. We can be blessed. We can live free. Jesus is the Savior. Hallelujah. Receive Jesus into your heart. If you've never made him the Lord of your life, it will change everything in your life. Just say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something with it. Glory to God. I like that prayer because that's the prayer I prayed when I got born again. And if you prayed that with your heart and you received Jesus as the Lord and Savior, something happened to you on the inside. In your spirit, man, you were born again. And now you can go into that new life that's been put on the inside of you. You can grow and, and become strong in the Word and become uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Scripture calls that being born again. And it is a marvelous thing. Everything in my life changed when I received Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. We want to send you something if you have or if you, if you did that or if you just would like to have this free salvation package to check it out. We'll be glad to send it to you. It's a book and two teaching brochures to learn more about who you are in Christ, what happened to you when you're born again. Jesus did it all for you so you can live free, healed, and prosperous. Request your free salvation package today. To do that, go to kcm.org. Begin to speak faith, think faith, walk in faith. God has a great future for you. Join me again tomorrow. This is Gloria Copeland reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Learn more about beginning your new life in Christ Jesus. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org. Jesus did it all for you. It's time to receive his love and live the abundant life God provided for you. For additional teaching and free information on salvation, go to kcm.org.